This is the Demystifying Mental Toughness Podcast, hosted by David Charlton, and you're listening to this podcast to help you build your own mental toughness, or so that you can support other people or your clients better. Either way, you will learn more about developing this plastic personality trait that all but guarantees that you will perform better and lead a more prosperous life. Hi there, hope things are going well for you. If not, you might want to listen to this podcast episode, which comes from a slightly different and unusual angle. Normally, when a person gets in touch with me as a sports psychologist, it's because they've got a problem. It just seems to be that way. When things are going well, or when they're feeling good or confident, the likelihood is they won't get in touch with a sports psychologist. I suppose it's the same in everyday life. You wouldn't go to the GP if you were healthy. So it seems that also sports psychologists are viewed that way. Is that the way you see it too, I wonder? Yet this episode isn't really about problems, per se. It's a short bite, and it comes from well-renowned sports psychologist to a host of PJ Tour players, Gio Valiente. It takes us all the way back to episode 17 of the podcast, and I went on to ask Gio about overconfidence and arrogance in golf, and the impact that it has on players. I really hope you enjoy the listen. Please do tune into my musings towards the end if you are one of those people who aren't in a great place with their golf or with their sport because I'm going to offer some little tips and bits of advice that can help you. I'm quite interested in like overconfident golfers or maybe you talked about the word cavalier before. Do you often find that there are actually some underlying fears there that these type of people have? Yeah, listen, a lot of times arrogance, you know, this overconfidence, this this arrogance uh, that that athletes develop. Um, it's it's interesting because it's a compensation. On the one hand, you need to be super confident to play professional sports. You know, as Nick Faldo says, and Matt Kuchar has observed, and Jack Nicholas, like golf will try to take your confidence from you. Uh, and it's same in, in really in all sports, the NFL, the NBA players I've worked with. And so what happens oftentimes is they overcompensate by developing a real arrogance. And they even travel with entourages, you know, surrounding themselves with people who keep telling them how great they are. I always say, you know, I forgive arrogance out of my athletes because sometimes it's just a survival mechanism. Like they, they need to overcompensate to protect their confidence. I don't particularly like it in my friends or family. I don't think it's an attractive trait, but sometimes athletes need it um, because confidence, what it does is it acts as a buffer. You know, it's it's a protector from the intense pressure and, and, and enormous pressures that these athletes sometimes carry. Uh, so sometimes it's it's a function of survival. Sometimes it is to mask an underlying insecurity and overcompensation uh, for insecurities. And sometimes it's just a habit, right? Sometimes uh, kids have been brought up, their parents tell them how great they are and their coach keep telling them how great they are. So by the time they become adults, they just have the habit, the view of themselves that they're great. Uh, so there's a lot of different reasons why we see overconfidence. Uh, the nice thing uh, uh, about golf, is, as I said, is it's expository. It tends to expose. Uh, it, it, you know, there's two types of confidence. There's confidence through arrogance and confidence through humility. And people think that you can't be both humble and confident at the same time. And that's not true. It's actually the best type of confidence is the confidence that is coupled with you know, real humility. So yeah, getting back to golf exposing that confidence come arrogance, if you like, uh, in what ways have you seen that happen? Oh boy. So, so the, the, the way the dominoes fall is, is overconfidence expresses itself really in two ways. Uh, number one, um, you don't practice very hard because you think, Hey, you know, I'm just, I'm great. Right. If you believe that your greatness is of you, and not, not tied to your work ethic, you tend to get sloppy. And so you don't play very well. And all of a sudden there's, there's cognitive conflict, right? There's a collision between your view of yourself and what the scoreboard is telling you. So that's, that's one mechanism by which it happens. And, and the other way in which it happens um, is overconfidence tends uh, to lead to high risk taking because you think you're so great. You take on more risk than your game warrants. And so you get punished that way. Uh, so as, as I said, overconfidence will expose it, uh, and, 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 and it's a mirror there. Now the question becomes, um, is, uh, somebody, um, 
at that point, who's overconfident, can they become self-aware to realize that their problems are rooted in, in, in the overconfidence and the arrogance and start to correct that? Because if not, you know, it'll, the game will run you out of the game. It'll punish the same thing for a long time uh, if you don't figure it out. Your role in, in helping the, the high risk take uh, develop that self-awareness, how does, on the golf course specifically, how does, how, how does that work for you? Well, I always want to be careful. Um, you know, you, you always want to be careful when tinkering with someone's confidence because it is really important. And, you know, research shows that a, a little overconfidence is a good thing. If this is where someone's skills are, you know, and this is their confidence, you know, you don't want the confidence lower because confidence will drag skill down. Underconfidence is super dangerous. A little overconfidence tends to elevate skill. Um, and, and so what we know is just, for example, an inverse relationship between confidence and anxiety. Right. So as confidence goes down, anxiety goes up. And as confidence raises, anxiety goes down. And so you always want someone's confidence to be just a little overconfidence is a good thing. Where it gets dangerous when there's too much overconfidence. Um, you know, there's this old saying in coaching, and forgive my language, but it's called whipped cream and shit. Uh, the idea being when you have a, a player or an athlete who's too overconfident, you have to stir a little, a little, hey man, don't, don't, don't get over your skis. You're a little big for your britches. You have to knock them down a couple of pegs. And the opposite is true. When somebody's um, not doing things very well, it's, it's full of crap. Like you want to elevate them. So you're always trying to gauge where your athlete is relative, again, to, as I started the podcast, to where you think they need to be. Um, and so sometimes it's, it's, it's a very sobering talk. It's, hey, listen, uh, I've worked with 20 golfers. And if I were to rank their work ethic, I'm putting you at number 20. You're the, the least hardworking in my stable. Um, so you might want to think about that. So just, just little ways to, to challenge them, um, uh, to make sure they're what we call calibrated. So yeah, asking important and sometimes challenging, difficult questions is a, a big part of your armory. Yeah. And, and also helping the player actually ask themselves that question as well, because obviously they've got to go out and do it on the, on the golf course. That's right. That's right. And again, it's, uh, you, you always want to be careful. You don't want to knock somebody down because confidence is so important. But again, when you see the overconfidence leading to laziness or sloppiness, that's when you got to maybe jump in there a little bit. Big thank you to Gio there for sharing his wisdom. Episode 17, incidentally, is a great listen if you want to dip into those archives where he goes on to share many stories of working on the PGA Tour and he chats about his two books, Fearless Golf and Golf Flow. So I alluded at the very start when I was introducing this podcast episode that most golfers or athletes get in touch with us as sports psychologists because they've got a problem. Sometimes it's because they're curious about our work and they're considering different ways to improve, but often it's because they've got a problem. So as a fixer of problems, I'm going to put that hat on right now and share some insight into some of the things that Gio mentioned about overconfidence and arrogance and how far removed it is from the player who's lacking in confidence or trust. So two things stood out to me. One was the fact that the overconfident golfer is able to relax and take their foot off the pedal in terms of how much they practice. And then secondly, he talked about, the, about this type of golfer potentially taking too many risks on the golf course and then costing themselves valuable shots. Now if we flip this to the player who lacks confidence, that are ridiculously reactive in the way that they practice, that they're in fixed mode most of the time, they're feeling anxious, they're worried about the next round or match, well, often they go on to overwork. I've seen many players pull out of competitions or tournaments to practice. I've actually been that person too in my youth. And this breeds tension. It breeds overthinking. It's far removed from risk taking. Essentially, you're working with a golfer here who's searching for perfection. Perfection every time they hit a ball or put a stroke. Every time they practice. Every time they play. Every shot they judge and they take it to heart. Self-criticism then often follows. So, some advice for this player. Why not just sit down for a second on a sofa, on a bed, and just relax a little? And I'd like you to consider how the overconfident and arrogant golfer actually goes about their business. You can learn an awful lot from this. So, the overconfident or arrogant golfer. What do you think they're thinking on the first tee? And what are they thinking when they're under pressure? trying to close out a win. I'd imagine they've got a can-do attitude. That's what they're going to experience. 
a quiet mind. It's certainly not going to be, I hope I don't do da 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 or they're not going to have 10 swing thoughts going on. They're going to keep it pretty simple. And then what about the physical feeling in their body? Their breathing? Well, that's probably going to be slower. Their heart rate will be down. They'll be feeling calmer. Their body will feel more relaxed. They'll not feel like they've got the weight of the world on their shoulders, which incidentally is going to aid a more flowing and rhythmical swing in golfing terms. And then lastly, if we think about their actions, they'll most likely have a plan. I'd imagine when you look at their practice schedule, it will be a lot more proactive than reactive. They'll have set drills that they do on a regular basis with little YouTube analysis going on. So a question for you to consider this coming season and a question to ask yourself an awful lot. If I was that overconfident and arrogant golfer who really trusted my ability right now, what would I do? A word of caution here is don't take the lazy approach. Don't head to the bar. Take a proactive approach. Perhaps try to be more bigger picture in your thinking. And don't beat yourself up so much. For more advice like this, for more musings, please do sign up to The Mental Edge, a regular newsletter which I send out. It's aimed to help you perform better, more consistently, and put a smile on your face. Enjoy your day. If you enjoyed this episode of the Demystifying Mental Toughness podcast with David Charlton, do check out my website, sport-excellence.co.uk and my online sports psychology resources. The Sport-Excellence website has essential resources for anyone looking to build their own mental toughness or the mental toughness of their athletes or teams, or if you want to achieve peak performance more often or optimal functioning. The Sport Excellence website has everything you need to keep moving forward and thrive. So go on, head over to sport-excellence.co.uk to find out more.